Understanding the proper methodology of sizing, selecting, and installing water meters for your commercial and industrial applications is extremely important to any water utility. In part two of this series, we'll help you better understand the application criteria and the terms used in meter right sizing. Let's dive into it. Welcome to the Smart Water Show, brought to you by Badger Meter. I'm your host, Maurice Blackwell, and this is the show where we discuss your everyday water utility problems and find the most effective technology solutions for you. Stay tuned for our question of the day at the end of this video to enter our weekly giveaway. In today's episode on water meter sizing, selection, and installation, we will walk you through the process of understanding the application profile. We'll cover two topics, the application criteria, things that you need to understand about the application in order to size the right meter, and then we will also review some important industry terms related to meter sizing and selection. Within your water utility, there are many different types of applications. That's why there's many different types of meters. As a general rule of thumb, we break them down into at least four different areas, single family or multifamily homes, industrial application, and commercial applications. Within each of those, there are many different types of applications as well. The first point I wanna make here is that meters should not be selected based on pipe size. I know this might be simple to some, but I want to make sure that people understand that just because there's a two inch pipe at a particular application doesn't mean I need a two inch meter. In most cases, hopefully the pipe size is large enough for the application, but in many cases that I've seen, utilities need to think about downsizing a meter in order to fit the application better. There are three things that you want to know about the user's application in order to size the right meter. You need to understand what's the anticipated minimum and maximum flow rate. You need to understand what is the anticipated average flow rate. What are they mostly going to flow at? Because that will help you determine a meter. And lastly, you need to understand what the average available water pressure is. The reason you need to understand that is because if you have a customer that has a particular pressure need for their application, their business or what have you, you need to make sure that the meter that you're going to put on there doesn't restrict them of pressure, meaning that they're not going to be able to operate properly. Next, let's understand some of the important terms that are used when sizing or selecting a meter. Most of the time, these are understood by most people, but I wanna break down some of the nuances here that you really understand what the manufacturers say when they state these particular terms. In the case of operating range, what most people think is this is where the meter should operate from low to high. That's partially true, but what the manufacturer normally states is this is the range of operation from low to intermittent high flow where the meter is guaranteed plus or minus one and a half percent accuracy. What I mean by the intermittent is this. If I have an application where the operating range of a meter is four gallons per minute on the low side up to 310 gallons per minute, and I have a customer application that flows at 300 gallons per minute, I can't run that particular meter on that application because it says intermittent high flow. This is where the meter can intermittently go to that particular flow, but if the meter was going to operate at that particular flow, in this case, 300 gallons per minute, continuously, I'd have to look at the next term here, which we're gonna get into is maximum continuous duty. What maximum continuous duty says is, this is where the meter can run 24 hours a day, seven days a week continuously without causing any degradation to the meter. So in the case we were talking about, let's say that same meter that had an operating range of four gallons per minute up to 310 gallons per minute, its maximum continuous duty may be at 200 gallons per minute. So that same application that I was talking about that would run at 300 gallons per minute, let's say most of the time, I would need to upsize to the next size meter in order to fit that particular application. The next term that I wanna get into is extended low flow. This is a number that manufacturers, they step outside of the plus or minus one and a half percent 
and they, they give you an extended low flow. So in this case, again, go back to my application where I was going from four gallons per minute to 310 gallons per minute. Let's say the extended low flow for that meter was two and a half gallons. What that means is if I look at the range of application, let's say in this application from time to time, this customer may see two and a half gallons, three gallons per minute. Well, I might not downsize to the next meter. I might look at the extended low flow and say, you know what, for that small amount of time where the customer is going to run below the four gallons per minute in between two and a half gallons per minute, I'm okay with plus or minus 3%. So I wouldn't necessarily downsize, but I would have a little bit less accuracy there, but it's still gonna be plus or minus 3%. The crossover point is another term that I want you to understand, and this has to do with compound meters. As you know, compound meters have two measuring elements, one for the low side and one for the high side, right? What this point is, this is the point where the meter's measurement goes from the low side to the high side or back. Let's say I have a compound meter that has a crossover point of 12 gallons per minute. Why would I care about that? Normally at that point of the crossover, the accuracy is not plus or minus one and a half percent. It's probably somewhat lower than that, right? If I had an application that a large amount of its time was running very near its crossover point, I might select a different meter for that application because at that crossover point, I'm not going to have plus or minus one and a half percent accuracy. If you have any questions about today's topic about understanding the application criteria and the industry terms being used, feel free to ask a question in the comments section below and I will personally provide you with an answer. Or if you'd rather send a private message or have questions related to metering or meter reading systems that I can help you with, be sure to connect with me on LinkedIn. Our question of the day. What other aspects of meter sizing, selection, and installation do you want to learn more about? Please provide your reply in the comment section below. Be one of the first 10 people to reply to be entered into our weekly Smart Water Show giveaway. If you found value in this content, be sure to click the like button and if you have a colleague that would benefit from listening to this episode on sizing and selection, be sure to share it with them by clicking the share button. Stay tuned for part three of this series where we will help you understand the nomenclature used on meter application data sheets and help you understand how data logging plays a critical role in meter right sizing. We'd like to thank you for watching this video and we'll catch you next time on the Smart Water Show.